G'day toy fiends, I'm Factor and this is Irikanji Toys. This is a channel where I go through all my tips, tricks and little bits of things that I've learnt over the years on how to make your own designer toys. And also kind of delving into our community a little bit and talking to artists and live streaming and doing all the little bits and pieces. So in this episode, I'm going to do something that I haven't done yet. I'm going to cast some resin. I know it's been like 12 videos and I've done sculpting and everything like that and everybody's, when are you going to actually cast some resin? <laughs> so if you've been following our live streams, you would have noticed that I have been working on this piece. This is my my Robo Ayam Kampong. Um, bit of a tricky one to mould. I ended up doing a three piece mould of this. And uh, yeah, this is the mould here. Um, there were a few things with this that I kind of, well, you know, I'm going to admit, I messed up. I, I, I totally messed up. I was trying to save silicon, as you can see, I didn't have a hell of a lot left, so I was adding old silicon to it. Um, and I decided I'd make an irregular shape because I'm like, yeah, that'll save up that silicon. And then I was like, yeah, the mold came out really nicely and everything and like all my gating's good. I've got three pieces and like, yeah, I'm ready. Oh, wait on, wait, wait one second. If I fill the resin down here and the resin comes up here, it's going to come out the gates here and pour out before it gets up there. Or if I get the resin up there, it's going to leak out here. <sighs> so, yeah, you can mess these things up. Admittedly, I may have possibly had one or two drinks while I was doing this, but it's okay. But I figured out a way to actually get it working, and I have subsequently casted quite a few of these. And that's exactly what I'm going to take you through and show you now. And I'm going to narrate this for the first time, because it's pretty hard to sit there and talk your way through while you're casting resin. You need a bit of focus, especially for this piece that I messed up on. So, I'm going to do three different ways of casting my resin and show you three different techniques and I hope you enjoy it because it was a bit of a pain in my butt to do. But the pieces turned out good. So, enjoy. Cool, so... I'm just emptying out this old container here that had some old kind of like dry resin. I'm just gonna maybe just clean off this a little bit, wipe it down, make sure there's no bits and pieces that are stuck on there. Usually I'll take like a alcohol wipe and um, put that and just kind of wipe it down a bit. Sprayed a bit of mold release on this one just because it's a bit of a tricky mold um, and I want to kind of preserve it. You just need a bit of a light spray on this. Then I'll assemble the three-piece mold to make sure it's fit and the keys are all lined up really nicely. And then I'm using the boards here, so the boards to give you rigidity. And I'll just take my trusty rubber bands. Now, the thing with rubber bands is that you want to have like an, like an equal weighting on the rubber bands. You want it, the pressure to be nice and even on this. And on both sides and you see where the boards kind of overhang where it kind of like pulls the boards in that's not good right like so because that'll cause flashing anywhere where there's pressure that's not equal on your mold you do run the risk of having flashing so i'm kind of expecting there's going to be maybe a little bit of flashing on this um just because i made the mold <sighs> you know so I've got three across the top, three across the bottom. I'm trying to keep them kind of a bit equal. Um, at the moment, I'm just like, you know, killing space because I should have cut this part out of the video and I'm wandering around. And I'm grabbing the resin and I'll just kind of adjust the elastic bands a bit and make sure that they're even and the pressure around the mold is exact because this is how you reduce your flashing. You just have it nice and tight and uh, yeah. Cool, so always wear fucking gloves, 
because this shit is kind of poisonous, plus it's sticky and it's just really annoying. So I always wear gloves every time I'm casting. I don't want this stuff in my hands. It's bad enough that I'm going to breathe it. Now these, this is an easy cast. It's an Australian resin. It's expensive by Barnes. They say shake really well, but I don't shake these. I just tip them up and down and kind of move them around a bit before I use them. Because if you shake them, you can get like bubbles in it. And the bubbles won't necessarily always clear when you mix it and then when you pour it, unless you leave it for a while. So I've got my container and I've got my little my little pop stick thing here. Um, I've got some mold release. And I've got these little things. Yeah, this is plasticine. This is how I'm going to fix my leaking issue. They're basically plugs. So I pour in one half, that's 100 mils. I kind of measured this out by doing a displacement thing. I, I dropped my piece into water and then measured what the displacement was so that I could figure out how much resin I would need for this. Um, pretty simple trick. And I'm just having my plugs here because there's vents on the right and there's vents on the left. And I'm gonna plug these. Uh, I've got my part B and this is an equal part. Just making sure that the levels that I've got exact here. Pop stick. And then I put in part B. Now this stuff sets really quickly. This is like three minutes and it'll start, you know, like, you know. So I just mix it really, 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 really quickly because I'm going to have to do some maneuvering here. There's a fair bit. So I'm just pouring, the holes here aren't very big. And because this is a complicated mold, there's a couple of like overhangs in that. I will kind of move it around a bit just to release any kind of trapped air bubbles that might be in there or anything like that. Um, I know where there's a couple of little problem spots, so I'll do that. Plus you'll see that I'll kind of shake it every so often and tap it. Now I'm putting the plugs in because I could see the resin coming up out of those vents and I'm just plugging those with plasticine really, really quickly, like rushing, rushing, rushing. And then I'm just kind of like shaking it to release any more air bubbles. And now I'm just gonna fill it all the way up to the top and hope to hell. Yeah, a bit more shaking. And all of this is happening just really quickly because <laughs> this stuff's gonna set like pretty quickly. And I'm having to do complicated bits and pieces of shit around this. <laughs> just because of the way I made my mold. I just made it difficult for myself. Right? And a bit of resin's leaking out off the top and all that. But that's okay. I'll just grab my pop stick and I'll kind of push it back down in. Because I did really exact measurements. I didn't want to waste too much resin. And when I've kind of finished this, you know, you're always getting bits of resin stuck in your container. So here's a trick. Yeah, put your pop stick on the side of the, the little container that you've done your resin in. Cool, and we're just watching it bloom. I call this the bloom. So I fast forward through this and it just, this is how it sets. Like it just kind of suddenly blooms like a flower. I don't know, I love it. You can see the pop stick set there now, right? I can just now pull all the resin out. So this set, maybe uh, probably about half an hour later, it's still a bit warm, and in theory, I should probably leave it for maybe about an hour before demolding it. But I'm pretty fucking impatient, and <laughs> I just can't be bothered. And I want to see it because this was the first piece, right, that I did, and I just want to see how it's going to turn out. And check flashing, check problems. You always do a test piece, right? And moment of truth, the fun part. Yeah, turned out pretty well. And yeah, there is a tiny bit of flashing and I knew that that would happen just because the elastic bands weren't sticking too well. Now, I know that the third piece in the legs, that's really kind of going to be a bit tricky to get out without tearing it or anything like that. This silicon is the 500 that I use a lot. It's very, very tough. I'm just removing some of the gating stuff and uh, making sure that it's all that. Yeah, getting rid of the resin off the top there because I want to pull this piece out through kind of like, you know, off the legs. And I'm worried there's like jaggy bits there on the feet that are going to tear into it. Um, you always run this risk when you're doing three-piece molds that, you know, if it's if it's a quick one, like this one was, like I did this one really quickly, uh, you're going to, you know, 
run the risk of maybe f- fucking tearing tearing shit or something like that. Um, but I'm just making sure that when I pull this out, that it's not going to cause any damage um, to the silicon. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I was pulling this out. I subsequently kind of figured out, you know, a better way of doing this. Um, but yeah, and it just kind of pops out, right? That's how you do the two leg thing, right? Um, yeah, see, there's that flashing that I was talking about. On a clean mold, it wouldn't have been there. Um, and, you know, you don't need to cut this stuff away. Like, a lot of the flashing in that, it'll just come off with your fingernail. You can just kind of scrape it off a bit, you know? And I'm just kind of cleaning up. It's still warm, and I love that warm feeling. Okay, so I'm going to prepare the mold for the next piece, and I'm going to do something a little different here. Just cleaning it out a little bit, making sure that there's no bits and pieces stuck. And I'm going to use some pearl powder. And I just basically, it, it's kind of like painting this on. You can just get pearl powder from anywhere, any art shop. And I kind of paint it on. like, And it, it it's really good because the pearl powder just kind of sticks to the silicon. Um, and just kind of stays there as a coat. Something about it just lets it stick so i'm just going through with the pearl powder and i'm just kind of like painting in little bits and pieces um you know i like these colors um yellow and yellow and purple are always two really awesome kind of colors um so coming through doing the other side same kind of pattern same kind of like spaces it's not going to be exact right like (laughs) this isn't a perfection thing you could probably sit there for a long time and make it all perfect and shit but I don't do that. I just I just go through and throw things down and kind of, you know, let things happen. So just getting all the little bits of detail. Now one thing, when you're using pearl powder and you're doing this, wear a freaking mask. This stuff is so fine, it gets into the air and it gets into your lung and it's really bad for you. I really screwed up with this. I, I forgot to wear my mask while I was doing this. And I'll tell you what, the next day, I actually had, like, some pearl powder in my boogers in my nose. It was freaking gross, man, and it was really bad, and I realized, like, how bad that was for me, and I probably still got some pearl powder in my lungs. Don't do it. Like, just, whenever you're working with pearl powder, you should automatically just grab a mask and put it on. I feel so stupid for having done this, um, because I always remember, but... To be honest, it's been so long since I've actually worked with pearl powder that, you know, I just didn't even think about it. So I'm just putting the purple on, um, making sure it's all kind of, I don't know, kind of matchy-matchy on both sides. Kind of. Um, but there's a few few little things with using pearl powder. Like, obviously, when you're pouring the resin, it's going to maybe pour down on the sides and it's going to knock some of this pearl powder off. So you might see like little run spots where the resin's running down the side of the mold. You can't really get past that unless you're pouring into a big wide mouth right down to the bottom and it's filling all the way up, then yeah. So almost done and I've just gone off to do something, probably to have a drink of some kind, more than likely. Like I am now. Okay, so I casted it, I put it together, and let's see how this pearl powder worked out. I, I don't know. Sometimes when you use pearl powder, it just it's, it's a mystery, and then when it comes out, it's either really crap, or sometimes it's just really, really, really freaking cool. So let's see which one this is going to be. I mean... The colors are cool. Yeah, it looks like some of the coats weren't thick enough. Um, and something that I forgot to mention, probably didn't show on the video before, once you've done your coating of pearl powder, turn your, your mold upside down and just bang it. And all the excess pearl powder will kind of just fall off the mold. Um, just removing all this flashing and I'm going to try to get this middle bit out. But I really like these colors. It's just, I think some of the coating wasn't wasn't too thick. And I can, and maybe I'll show it in a minute, I can kind of see where the resin's kind of run down 
on it a bit and kind of made it a bit, but you know, this is I am Kampong. Like, you know, it's not supposed to be perfect or anything like that. It's supposed to be tatty and dirty and. So, just making sure that I can actually pull this middle piece out without damaging the mold again is always the, the hardest part. Yeah, I really like these colors. They're, they're pretty fantastic. But, you know, the problem here is that I can't paint directly onto this. It's still raw resin, so I'd have to coat it. Now, it will leave bits on the mold, as you can see. Um, I sometimes just kind of wipe that off with the alcohol. Or, you know, it's not inside the mold. So sometimes I just kind of leave it, you know? Okay, got my drink, and I'm going to set up for the next piece. Put my gloves on, because, you know, you don't want this pearl powder on your fingers. It kind of sticks worse than glitter. And I'm going to go for like a purple and a bronze in this one. So I'm just going to kind of lavishly lay this down through the whole thing, and then I'm going to come over and put the bronze as highlights on it. And that'll kind of blend the bronze with the purple. So I'm just gonna, I'm just basically blocking all this out, and I'm probably using way too much pearl powder here and wasting it. But uh, you know, I'm just doing this quickly, man. She's cool. Just blocking the whole thing out, right? And I'm just using a regular paintbrush, like just like dry brushing it on, you know. And uh, see here, you can see I'm doing the bronze, and I'm kind of swishing it around a little bit to kind of mix the bronze in with the purple, and I'm kind of highlighting just separate little areas where I want these two colors to blend and where, you know, maybe I want the bronze to be coming through a bit more. This is the great stuff about working with pearl powder. You can just kind of mix it all in and paint it on and just making sure that I've got all the little bits <laughs> because I noticed on the first cast that I did, I missed a couple of the edges and if you don't get all those little edges where the mold is, it just doesn't yeah, it doesn't come out very well and you get these mismatch between the colors and stuff. Just getting down into all the little gaps. And now I'm just going to come and I'm going to block this one out too. And I'm going to kind of replicate like where the shading with the bronze is a little bit. And this is all dry, right? Like the pearl powder, it's just powder. It just loves to stick to silicon. It loves sticking to silicon. And just blocking it out more. I might replace that with some music later, but uh, I thought I might just do some humming. And then this is all num yeah, this is all all done. And just kind of coming back and replicating what I did on the other piece. A little bit and just kind of you know doing some shading getting into those little spikes and like you know the front part and yeah cool and it's casted and what I didn't show you was that this time around I actually put color into the resin and there's a reason behind that and I, I didn't put anywhere near enough reason behind that is that when you're using pearl pigments and when you when you go to clean it up and cut it back it will just cut back to the white resin so put a color behind it, and it's not so, you know, that, ooh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, this one, this one turned out really, really nice. Like, I, I love this piece. But, as you can see, I, I, I colored the resin as pink, right? And just to just go over it a little bit more, like if it had been white and I'm cutting pieces off or removing flashing or I have to like fix something, when I cut that back or sand it back or something, it's just going to go to the white resin, right? So sometimes what you can do is put some dye in your resin before you're doing the pearl and make it really dark or make it a color that's very similar to what you're doing so that when you actually clean that flashing off or when you're you know using your scalpel to clean it off 
it cuts back to a car and not just a stark white. Because it's hard to match these pearl colours when you're paint, hand painting and stuff. You can come back and, and fix up bits and pieces and all that kind of thing. But yeah, if you have a if you have this if you have a coloured resin as a base when you're using these pearl pigments, um, and you're cleaning it back, it's not so obvious. It's it's not bright white. Um, it can be a colour that's that's very similar. And you can see here this shading. The shading's turned out really well. Um, it's kind of like reverse painting. There's a big air bubble there. Yeah, I mustn't have moved around too much. I knew that was a problem area because it was just elevated slightly. Um, but all in all, yeah, this one's really good. A couple of little problems. Um, and you will notice, like, as I'm rubbing it, there's still pearl powder on this. And it's gone on my fingers here. So, yeah, you might want to wipe these down. They need a good clean after you've actually pulled them out of the mold. But out of, out of all of them, I think this one's great. I didn't put anywhere near enough dye in the resin. I should have had that in like a dark red or I should have done it like a purple or something like that. But you can kind of understand the theory of what I'm saying here. You know, by having a, a dark colored resin um, behind your pearl pigment so that, you know, when you're, when you're cleaning it up and that, it's just not so obvious. Yeah, that air bubble's gonna piss me off. And I don't know, I'm gonna have to fill that and I don't know how to paint it. I'm going to have to kind of bond it in somehow or something like that. It's going to be hard to match these colors, man. But I don't know. I'll find a way. Yeah, God, shit. Worse than fucking glitter this shit. <laughs> Good and last forever. But this stuff just goes everywhere. I should have been wearing gloves for this, man. Wear gloves. Wear a mask. Be careful when you're, wearing, when you're working with pearl pigment. Just be really careful. It's amazing stuff, but it's really not good for your lungs, and it just kind of loves to stick everywhere. But um, yeah, I mean, I can still see a little bit where the resins like come down, but it's great. So these are the three pieces that I've done. Um, this is just the straight resin. I've just hacked a bit of the flashing off. Um, it turned out nicely. Yeah, it'll paint up. I'll have to clean this off. Um, sand off this, you know, make them, I think it'll still stand, yep, still stands, cleaned up, worked out well, uh, this one, I mean, I love the colours, but I'm not sure what to do about this, you know, as I, as I was talking about before, um, I can't paint directly onto this because it's just resin, so I'm gonna have to put some kind of coat on this, maybe a clear coat, like a matte clear coat, or even a gloss clear coat, and then I'm going to have to paint over that because uh, otherwise the paint will just kind of flake off. But I love the colours, but it's so imperfect. But the aesthetic that I'm going for this piece is imperfect. It's like a village chicken, you know? I am Kampung. It's an Indonesian village chicken, you know? So it's supposed to be kind of ratty and, you know, messy and, you know, it's got like bits broken and like you know it's, it's not perfect it's not supposed to be it's supposed to be like this it's supposed to be dirty and like kind of you know as my uh friend chipta says kind of like a village roadrunner you know um i much more love this piece and i love the colors although it's not as yellow it doesn't have that you know starkness and you know you can still see just here where the resins run down the side of the mold and it's kind of like you know I love these colors like these colors are amazing so again um it's still raw resin even though it has this you know this layer on it it's still raw resin so i'm still probably can't paint directly onto this and need to give it a clear coat of some kind but i do have some matte clear coat that i'm going to use and there you have it robo i am kampong <sighs> Okay, so sound effects are not my forte. Um, but yeah, I had fun doing this. I'll probably only cast probably about 20 of these and I'll keep them limited to 20, 20 pieces. Um, so the next thing I'll have to do will be paint, clean them, clean them. I have to clean them up. Oh, I always skip that part because I freaking hate cleaning them. But you know, there's a video here that you can check out on how to clean them all up. 
it's a really riveting video. Um, but I'm I'm pretty happy with this. And finally, finally, I showed you some resin casting. Like all the other hundreds of YouTube videos out there. With, oh, I'm gonna both get the resin. You know, you've seen it all before. That's why I haven't done it yet. But um, I wanted to just do a couple of little extra things, and I wanted to show you how I fixed my mistake with my mold. And I also wanted to show you how using a three-piece mold, you can cast some really cool stuff. Because you saw the three-piece mold thing. Does this even work? Am I even doing this? I don't know if I can be bothered doing this in, in post-production. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the card works and you can click through and see that as well. Anyways, Toy Fiends, um, thank you once again for following through on my little video things that I'm doing here. I still feel like a noob, even though I've only been doing this for a year, and I've only created about 12 videos. Um, if you like any of the videos on this channel, please subscribe, and please drop me comments and let me know your thoughts, um, any other ideas that you have, um, anything you want me to talk about. I'm just kind of making this all up as I go along and randomly doing bits and pieces as I'm working. So there is no plan here. As I have said before, there is no plan. And sometimes that's the best way just to make toys. Don't have a plan. Just make something, mold it, cast it, paint it, check it out. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, you can always make the next toy. So here's to you. Go and make your next toy, alright? Cheers, toy fiends. Take it easy. So, what have I been drinking while I have been doing this video? Because this is the section where I tell you what I might have imbibed while I was... Okay, alright, alright. I'm still on the moon dog. And I was drinking this in the last video. Uh, this is the Tropical Crush. I don't know. Was I drinking this one in the last video? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know, but it's uh, refreshing, and once again, I'm on the alcoholic seltzer. It's 84 calories at 4% ABV, and look, I've only had two of these. I'm not sitting here absolutely freaking drunk off my mind making videos, okay? I save that for the live streams. <laughs> no, just kidding. Dead sober in the live streams. Absolutely. Okay? So, yeah, I've just been drinking the Moondog. Oh. Uh, <laughs> ah, shit. Okay. Soju too. Cool. Okay. You caught me. You caught me. It's all good. Interesting. <laughs> Take it easy, toy fans. Hey, don't drink if you don't drink and you don't want to drink. There is nothing wrong with not drinking, okay? I just enjoy it on my weekends, but don't ever feel pressured to drink. Don't drink and drive. And if you are a non-drinker, just have some soda. It's totally cool. Food's better than drinking anyways, right? Ooh, debatable. Take it easy, toy fans. Cheers. <laughs>